Nostradamus of presidential elections. Historian Alan Lickman from American University predicted nine of the last ten elections correctly. And he has a prediction who will win the Oval Office in 2024. Joining me now on The Morning Show, Alan Lickman, it is a pleasure. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I would say 10 out of 10. I think I got 2,000 right as I proved in my report to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. Gore should have won that election, but for the tossing out of black votes. But we're not here to relitigate 2000. Historians will be debating that for generations. Absolutely. So before we get to this year's prediction, latest yes. Washington Post poll taken October 26th through the 30th show that Vice President Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are in a statistical dead heat with Harris at 48% among both likely and registered voters, while Trump is at 47%. Other polls just as close. That said, you don't hold, I believe, much faith in polls, nor do I. You employ a different presidential prediction system. You call it 13 Keys to the White House. I'm going to show those 13 keys. Let's explain to everybody how it works. Yeah, it does not look at polls, which are snapshots, not predictors. And the error margin of the polls is far greater than the plus and minus 3% they tell you. That's just statistical error. Add on to that. People don't respond to polls. They may lie. They change their minds. And they don't know who the likely voters are anyway. That doubles the error margin, making them pretty much useless. Instead, the keys to the White House, and you've got some of them up there, tap into the structure of how American presidential elections really work as votes up or down in the strength and performance of the White House party. And because I have 13 indicators, I am able to very broadly gauge that strength and performance and determine whether it favors stability, the White House party stays in power, earthquake, they're booted out. And the way it works, if fewer than six of the keys go against the White House party, we have stability, six or more, we have earthquake. Okay, we'll talk more about your decision in just a few. So I watched a, a YouTube interview you did with your son, Sam, and you said, while you have every faith in the system you use this year, you have, I think the quote was, you have a, f a flock of crows in your stomach. Why? Because so much is on the line this year. I don't care that much about whether I'm right or wrong. I think 10 out of 11 would still be great, but I do think our democracy is very much on the line here. Democracy is precious, but like all precious things, it can be destroyed. We had a great growth of democracy in the late 20th century, and then in our own 21st century, democracy has been on the decline all over the world, mainly from developments from within. And we have a candidate who's made it clear he's going to govern on the model of his buddy, Viktor Orban, who snuffed out the political opposition, snuffed out the free press. And you've got to take it seriously. It's not taking seriously these would-be authoritarians that enables dictatorships to take hold. That's why I have crows in my stomach this year. And, and democracy is, is relatively new in the grand scheme of history. Who do you think holds the key to this year's vote? Young voters, women, the minority vote? Uh, my system doesn't break it down into different groups. No one is able to predict an election by breaking it down into its individual components. I give the analogy of your cup of tea. Pour sugar in. You can't learn anything from following the individual sugar models, but you can learn a lot from simple integral parameters like sweetness and density, and that's what the keys do. They look at integral parameters of the electorate as a whole, things like short and long-term economy, social unrest, scandal, policy change, foreign and military successes and failures. Let's get down to brass tacks. And again, you have correctly predicted the outcome of every election since 1984. And arguably, except for the famously close race in 2000, which you say you did correctly predict, but there are some who would say, well, no, maybe you didn't. But George Bush defeated Al Gore. Uh, we know what the outcome was. So this year, at least eight of the 13 keys you talked about favor one candidate. Who do you think is going to occupy the White, White House? According to the keys to the White House, the incumbent Democrats... Harris, the nominee, are down four keys. It takes six or more false keys to count them out and predict that Donald Trump will return to the White House. That's why my prediction system with a 40-plus year track record predicts that 
Kamala Harris will be a new pathbreaking president, the first woman president, and the first president of mixed African and Asian descent. Kind of foreshadowing where America's going. We're rapidly becoming a majority minority country. Old white guys like me are on the decline. One final point. I have been blasted. Oh, you're so-called bias. You know, you're uh, liberally biased. That's why you're predicting Harris. My predictions are predictions, not endorsements. They're totally nonpartisan. I've predicted the two most conservative presidents of our time. Ronald Reagan in 1982, when 60% of Americans said he was too old to run again, and Donald Trump in 2016 in defiance of all the pundits and the pollsters. I've also predicted liberals like Barack Obama. So my predictions have zero to do with my own political inclinations. There is no bias is what you're saying. So despite that flock of crows in your stomach, and with this being election day, you stand by that prediction, is it a statistically close race? And do we know by the end of this Tuesday night or do we have to wait? I stand by my prediction. The biggest myth in American politics is the so-called October surprise. I've always in over 40 years made my predictions before then and never changed them. The biggest October surprise in modern history was the Access Hollywood tape showing Trump bragging about sexually assaulting women. Even Republicans thought he was finished. Critics said, you got to change your prediction. I didn't. If I had listened, I would have been wrong. And I would also dissent with a lot of the conventional wisdom. I think we may know on election night, not nine o'clock, but you know, maybe the wee hours of Wednesday morning who the victor is. Because remember, it's not the polls that are critical. It's the era in the polls, which is so much larger than the margins between the candidates. And it will depend upon which way that era goes. I'm predicting for Harris, and I do think we may know. Alan Lickman, fascinating. I appreciate your time. Have a great day. Oh, my great pleasure. Take care.